Hey, hey, third graders up at Jesu Elementary in University Heights. This goes out to you. Soon the green leaves of fall are gonna be long gone. We're way done with summer, winter's approaching. And it's not just the plants like that tree, like that sugar maple, that are gonna have to do something about it. I'm naturalist Marty Calabrese with Cleveland Metro Parks. Come along, let's talk about some of those things that an animal might do to winterize. I'm talking about possibly hibernate, or maybe employ certain adaptations built into the animal like thick fur. Or how about migrate to get out of here? It's too cold for the animal, or maybe it's too cold for the food that it eats. Let's do it. So what's the deal with the green leaves anyway? This oak leaf has green in it, which allows photosynthesis to happen. That means the tree can produce its own food or sugar. Then, as it gets colder, less and less sunlight, the leaves start to uh, reveal their true colors, like yellow and orange, because there's less and less green. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get to see red, like in this maple leaf. This redback salamander is going to do a short-term hibernation called torpor, T-O-R-P-O-R, -O -O and that's how it's going to handle the colder temperatures. Its own body temperature is going to chill out during the winter. With reptiles like this snake, this northern brown snake, they'll need to go into a hibernation-like state, kind of like the redback salamander. Remember torpor? Well, in the case of reptiles, it's called brumation. They do not eat during that time because digestion requires heat. I have black oil sunflower seed in my hand. And that black-capped chickadee, if this is just great nutrition for that animal. With winter approaching, they need to eat and eat and eat and put on that body weight. In fact, they're gonna eat a third of their body weight every day when winter approaches. And then they almost lose it every night, every cold night. And this is one of their adaptations to help them get through the cold winter. These mallard ducks are a great example of migrators, but it's a little odd. In the Cleveland area, they're actually here year round. But when it's our summer, parts of their population can be as far north as Canada. And when it's our winter, parts of their populations can be as far south as Florida. That's a big tulip leaf. Hibernation, adaptation, and migration. Those are some of the options that animals have to tolerate the winter ahead. What are you gonna do to handle those colder temperatures? I'm naturalist Marty Calabrese. Quick shout out to Mrs. Clary at Jesu School. Thanks for watching this virtual hike.